Hey everybody, you might remember a few months ago I talked about converting this shed behind me into an office and it's all done and I'm gonna take you on a tour, so come on. Welcome to the Rave Cave, also known as the new global headquarters of Rebel Haiku. Let's uh, take a look around, I'll give you the grand tour and uh, you can see what we've done. So obviously you may notice something different about the entryway. We added these gigantic windows on the corners. Please note my plant, not dead yet. Well, the first one's dead, but uh, my mom tells me that nothing can kill a sand suburbia, so that's cool. Um, what else? We've got uh, over here, this is the main workspace. We've got a pallet wall. We've got a loft. I'll take you up there in a minute. You can check it out. We've got a refrigerator. We've got all the stuff that you uh, can imagine might be in here, but uh, we got some surprises along the way. So let me uh, come on in and I'll tell you a little bit more. Um, the first thing that you'll note is that Everything is covered. So we've got insulation on the ceiling and the floors. You like this chandelier? It's dimmable. Here, watch. Oh, that's very satisfying. So anyway, um, yeah, we do have a dimmable chandelier, which you have to have in a remote work environment. But um, anyway, insulation all around. Instead of using drywall, we use this kind of like panel board, which, you know, it does have some kind of unsightly seams but it was half the price. And once we painted it and put these beams up, you really can't tell. So um, it didn't really matter, but insulation, huge help for the uh, temperature control, paneling all around. Note the floor, yes, this is very thick padding and uh, brand new Berber carpet. Thankfully had a hookup over at the uh, carpet place, got this installed and it's super nice and uh, helps hold the heat significantly better uh, than just a wooden floor. So uh, that's a fun fact. Um, so that was our first part is get everything uh, measured, insulated, get the panels in, get the whole thing locked up from that perspective. We had a little bit of work to do with uh, window trim. And then I found these giant windows on a uh, Facebook marketplace and I figured, hey, I mean, take a look. It lets in so much natural light um, it just completely changes the whole feel. And um, I actually never really need the chandelier. I only turn it on for cool purposes or at nighttime um, to see what I'm doing. But uh, I got these four uh, huge um, floor to ceiling windows. Look at the view out the back. I mean, that's pretty cool. You can just kind of see out there in God's country right out the window there. So I got these uh, used from another house renovation. Uh, went and picked them up somewhere over the Bay Bridge. Thankfully, they fit perfectly into the corners and uh, they're two pane Anderson. So they're really nice and don't let in a lot of uh, a lot of the elements. So that was a big construction project. And by the way, I'm going to give... Uh, a link to all of the um, vendors and, and folks that helped uh, where I got my stuff, links to some of the things that I bought, the HVAC system. I'm gonna put that all in the comments. I'm gonna give you the total price, uh, price per um, you know materials and labor for a breakout of what everything costs. I mean, you'll notice we've got a lot of electricity cooking in here and that's because we ran a, a line out. We actually have our own panel out here just for the amount of juice that we're running. Um, I think it's way overkill, but I just wanted to know, look, if one day I want to put a plasma cutter in here, I can do it. Uh, right now, it's just mostly running a fridge and a bunch of electronics and um, this baseboard heater. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of questions about how you're going to heat a shed. And um, I'll tell you what, I ran heat in here a little bit before the insulation was in, and that thing just ran all the time. But now with the uh, floor, you know, the floor padding, the wall and ceiling insulation, this baseboard heater, even uh, at night, I'll just turn it down to like level three. Right now it's up all the way because it's like the coldest day of the year. Uh, but this has worked really, really well just to keep things, you know, um, not super hot during the nighttime, but nights and weekends, I'm not in here. So I don't need it to be, uh, you know, a sauna. But during the day, you know, I just crank it up all the way. And um, it's a little chilly when I first come in, but um, none of my uh, electronics have frozen yet. And uh, although my one plant, my uh, majesty palm, rest in peace, is no longer with us. I do have a couple cactuses and bonsai trees and they are still, they are still holding their own. Um, so that brings my total horticultural count to three, uh, which is a new personal record. So I'm really proud of that. Um, but anyway, so that's heating and air conditioning. Um, during the colder, uh, during the warmer months, when I need to put an actual air conditioner, I do have a unit. Uh, here's a picture of it right here. I actually got this and was gonna use this as an all-in-one system for the whole year. And uh, after about a month, the heat cut out on it. So it didn't work. Uh, the air conditioner worked, but um, by the time all of this was set up, I didn't need air conditioning. It was uh, cold out. So 
So I reached out to the manufacturer and I got a replacement and uh, I'm just gonna pull it out um, in the spring or summertime when I need AC. And it's a self-standing unit that's gonna go right here, pour it out the back window, and um, that will solve the air conditioner. So I think like that's my biggest uh, electricity pull on this tiny house right now is the heating and air conditioning. But what are you gonna do? I basically live in here, so um, so you gotta, you gotta keep the temperature regulated. Let me show you a couple other things. One of the coolest things is this pallet wall back here. And uh, if you'll notice, it's not just a pallet wall, it is different thicknesses of pallets. It's like a relief. So you can see this, the boards are on all different sizes. And um, shout out to my man, Marcus on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I was originally gonna get a bunch of pallets and rip them down and sand them and stain them. And then I realized that, that would take me eight years to do at my current level of free time. So I literally uh, kept an eye to Facebook Marketplace. I found someone that already had these all stripped down. Now it's removed like in a big pile. And um, look, don't tell anybody, I paid to just have them delivered to my house. Like, I know that's the mo mo not the most like hipster bespoke way to do this, but look, man, gotta get done. So we got all the pallet wood. Um, my neighbor, Josh, did all this work. I mean, I think I helped, but really he was the brains behind this operation. But um, we had just laid it out, did the different um, levels. And in fact, there's some really cool, you know, original um, prints on here, some stuff that came from wherever it was manufactured from. and. I don't even know what it means, but uh, but it's pretty cool. So it was already dried out and kind of aged. Um, it was already pre-cut into the thick, uh, into the same lengths. So we basically grouped it by length, um, cut them where we needed to, and then it's all nail gunned up on the wall with insulation behind. Um, it's pretty noise proof in the sense that that direction is the street and really can't hear anything. Um, but I really like how it looked with the uh, with the uh, lighting. So hey, let's go up in the loft. You want to see up here in the loft? This is where it gets crazy. And um, this is actually the second floor of the rave cave. You can see we've got some color changing LEDs. Like if I'm feeling like aggressive today with my work, I will switch it to code red. Um, or if I want a soothing teal, I can do that as well. Or let's just say yellow. Oh, it's a warm yellow day. So I've got this controller and um, at nighttime, if I want to turn all the lights off and just put it in total rave mode, I, I can do that. <laughs> And I feel like everyone's office should have the ability to do this. Um, total cost, 12 bucks. Money well spent. Anyway, this is the upstairs loft. Um, I have slept in here. My kids had a sleepover. They slept down there. I slept up here. It's significantly warmer up here. That's one thing to note. Um, this isn't the most comfortable, I'd say, for sleeping a good couple hours. But next time, I'm going to bring up some padding. So it's uh, it'll be a little more palatable, <laughs> pun intended. Anyway, this is the loft. It's got pillows. It's got stuff it's got i think there's some snacks in there too anyway that's the loft I'm pretty excited about that i can hide up there my kids have done virtual school up there i think it's pretty cool um so this is the work zone this is my maker zone this is my cricut maker look at all my maker accessories for my cricut so that's where i do my cricutting and um what else we just got my normal um work zone i like to keep my desk just empty because it's the only part of the house that doesn't have anything on it so whew, Really exciting to have that. Got my workstation here. Got everything plugged in. I got my backup drives. My diffuser. Are you wondering what I'm diffusing? Yes, I am diffusing doTERRA holiday piece. And I'm also diffusing Young Living Stress Away. So aren't I modern? Anyway, that's what that is. I got my fridge. Um, kind of a in a one beverage mood these days, which is uh, Bubble Seltzer and Soleil Seltzer. That's Safeway's brand. So got to have a fridge. Um, I do have other things to drink, but they're not for business hours. This is my collection of my liquor cabinet over here featuring the brands of Lost Ark, uh, which is pretty exciting. I've also got some other things on my bookshelf, accessories, things of that nature. I have a picture of my grandfather's uh, bookbinding shop. This is also one of his original signs, which is pretty cool. So I got that over there. And uh, what else? I have snacks. This is the snack zone. It's in a, it's on a trust system. You know, there's no, uh, there's no money. It's just free for all our employees to uh, just take one. So I eat from that all the time. And um, what else? I've got these beams. It's to make it look a little lodgy, but it's also to cover up the seams in the ceiling panels. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'd love to answer your questions about the um, office shed slash rave cave. Uh, again, I'm gonna put in the comments just some info about the uh, you know total, total cost on this is about $12,000. 
So five for the shed, the rest for everything else, including uh, labor and materials and all that. So not the cheapest project. I guess if I did it all myself, I could cut that in half. But you know, if you're thinking of doing something similar, find a shed and again, inventory low. So uh, you'll want to jump on that. If you're getting it custom made, it's usually like a you know month to two month turnaround if you're getting one custom made. This one thankfully was on the on the lot. Shout out to uh, Myers Mini Barns in Lisbon, Maryland. And uh, other than that, it's materials and labor. And if you want to do a cool pallet wall, uh, man, it is a significant amount of time. I think that's three weekends, maybe four, um, two pallet trips. I don't know. I'm still crunching the numbers on everything. But um, anyway, I love it. Um, it's a great place to work. It's got tons of natural light. It is the uh, perfect rave cave slash remote office shed. Uh, let me know your questions. Be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. And uh, at one point, someday, if you want to come by and see it, uh, I have room for three people in here after the pandemic. Bye.